Good morning, everybody. Well, it's nine o'clock. <clears throat> it's almost time to get started here. So we're going to cue up a song and play a song and then we'll get started. Now let me see if I can do this without messing it all up. Oops, I don't think we want motor head. That probably wouldn't be a good church going song right now. find something a little more appropriate. Too many gadgets, can't figure them out. Try this one here.
This song is called The Call to Arms. And if you look around the way the world's going and the way everything is going, we need to call our brothers and sisters to arms. Not, I'm not talking about guns and stuff like right now. I mean, it's okay to have them too to protect your home and your family. But we need to come to arms. We need to use our sword of the spirit, our shield of faith, we need to use all these arms and we need to spread the word of God. We need to go out and we need to talk to people. We need to share his word because this is a revolution. I mean, the enemy is trying to take over. And if we just sit there and do nothing, he's going to win. So we're not, I mean, he's not going to win in the end. We know Jesus is going to come back and take over. But there's a lot of people I'd like to see come to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And that's what we need to fight for. So this morning, you know what I thought I'd do? Yeah, you know, I just thought I'd share a little bit of my testimony and why we do this. You know, why, why do we get up on Sunday morning and go to the motocross track a lot of times? And, and preach the word. And why why do we why do we sit here? You know now we decided you know to expand our ministry and do this every Sunday morning. Now why do we do this? Well, hopefully by the time I get done today, you'll understand why I do this or why CC helps me do this. And the more people we could get to join with us to do this, the more people we could reach because that's what it's all about. So. Now, I was going to start with my testimony a little bit. I was raised in the church from the time I was just a little kid. The church that, it was over in Germany. I was, you know, over in Germany. We're German, if you haven't gathered that by my name. <laughs> but, but yeah, we're, uh, we're from over there. And, you know, the church that my mom and dad went to, I'm, no problem, I mean, they're good people. But they were a little bit on the legalistic side. And you know, they, they really like telling you how to live your life. Which, all it did is make me run from the church. Now, and all the time that I was growing up, you know, I heard about Jesus and stuff and all that. But I never really understood what it meant to be saved. I just didn't get it. So, as I got older, I just ran from the church. Well, we moved to the United States, and that helped me even more because for some reason, once we came to the States, my mom and dad didn't force me to go to church anymore. Then it was my decision. Well, I was 17 years old. You know, you should be able to decide. So I would just go every now and again to make them happy. Right? That was the bottom line. Yeah, you know, I started driving a truck. I was an owner-operator, you know, driving all over the country. Loved it. Partied everywhere I went. You know, we used to say, don't know where the freight is, but we know where all the parties are. But, you know, we had a good time doing it. But that kind of a life has no meaning. And, you know, even as I was doing it, because of the way I was raised, you know, I knew there was more, that I needed more. I knew that if I died while I was doing everything I was doing, that I would go to hell. Well, that's a heck of a way to live, ain't it? I don't know how many other people know that, but I definitely knew it. And I was just driving my big old truck with my blinders on. I, I you know, God, Jesus, I, you know, leave them out of here. I'm, I got, I got things to do. Yeah, I quit doing that, and I started working as an electrician again, which was what I had done before. Moved to Kansas City. I ended up had my son Casey and I still remember one day you know I don't know if any of you all remember from Freedom of Road Riders but you know we used to party up, you know, over there off off uh, 291 down there by the river on Sundays and my son didn't live too far from there with his mother and I took him home on the bike and uh, I left there and I see him in my rearview mirror and it's like conviction hit. And 
I just felt totally guilty about just giving him a ride. You know, he was like four years old, three or four, something like that. Giving him a ride on my motorcycle as I had been drinking. I got, I mean, I was, I was it just, the guilt of it, it just didn't, how dare I hear, it's bad enough you're out there drinking and riding. Now you got your little kid on the motorcycle with you. And as time went on, I just started getting a wake up call. You know, I needed more than just that. And, you know, me and Cece met. And very shortly after, we both came to know Jesus. I was explained as what it meant to come to know Jesus. You know, hey, receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Once you do that, you know, the Holy Spirit comes, lives inside of you, and your life will change. And sure enough, my life changed. Because all of a sudden, the drinking wasn't fun anymore. The partying wasn't fun anymore. Uh, it just, my life changed. And next thing I know, you know, after that, I felt like God wanted me to preach. <laughs> like, okay, God, I'm not sure what you're thinking here, but you're talking to a guy that if he has to talk in front of two or three people, let alone a room full of people, he gets tongue-tied. I just can't do that. I, mean, I just, uh, I, I didn't know what he was thinking. And I still remember the first time that I, at that time, uh, I was with Disciples of Jesus Ministries. I don't know if anybody still remembers them. Uh, guy Geratano, he was a friend of ours. And guy had to go somewhere for the weekend, and he asked me to, you know, yeah, yeah, you want to preach? Uh, it's a good time to try it out. He asked me to preach, and I still remember the worship leader called in. She was sick or was in the hospital with one of her boys or something. Uh, one of the singers couldn't make it. Uh, it just ended up the only people there to do worship was CC and I. And Ed was there, a buddy Ed, and Ed Smith. And he ran the projector, put, put the music up on the wall, and me and Cece are going to sing. Acapella at that. Wow, I, that was a new one. <laughs> but we did it. It, it. it was an experience. Talk about, you know, put, being put to the test. And then, you know, you had, I had this sermon all lined out. You know, here's Heinz. He's going to be a big-time preacher today. He's finally going to get to share. And I mean, on paper, this looked like a really big message. And I remember the sermon was on love. And my five, wife's favorite subject. And I think it lasted about 10, maybe 15 minutes tops. I mean, it was done so quick. And I, I was done. Well, I guess we'll have a short sermon today. But only point I'm trying to make with this, even so, I didn't think I could do it. God enabled me to do it. And I was able to give the message, even though it wasn't much of one, it was a little bitty one. And everybody liked it. And we moved forward. Okay. So now it's time to move forward. We've got Jesus, you know, Jesus is our Savior. And it's time to move forward in life. And the calling, you know, that's what that's kind of a Christianese word of being called to minister. God wanted me to minister, and I felt that he wanted me to. If I want to use regular words. And I remember me and CC looking at the Bible, and we were uh, you know. Like, okay, what, what do we do? You know, so I felt like God gave us this scripture right there. Or I can't remember if he gave, if CC pointed it out or if I pointed it out first. Either way. But here's a scripture that God gave us. And it's Jeremiah 6, 16. And this is out of the New Living Translation. It says, this is what the Lord says. Stop at the crossroads and look around. Ask for the old godly way and walk in it. Travel its path, and you will find rest for your souls. Why did he give us that scripture? You know why? 
because a lot of people don't want this. And that's what we want for them. I really feel God gave us that scripture. You know, God wants people to return back to the old godly way and walk in it. And remember that last sentence, travel its path and you will find rest for your souls. We need rest for our souls. Man, there are so many people that I talk to that are discouraged. There's people that don't know a direction to go. They don't really know for sure what their I'll use it again. Their calling in life is what, what they ought to be doing. Well, it says right here, if we do this, travel its path and you will find rest for your souls. See, because if you don't do that, let me read the, read the next scriptures. It says, but you reply, no, that's not the road we want. Most people, there's so many people that don't want this. In verse 17, it says, I posted watchmen over you and said, listen for the sound of the alarm. But you replied, no, nah, we won't pay attention. There's a lot of people just, nah, we don't want that. Just leave me alone. Therefore, listen to this, all you nations. Take note of my people's situation. Listen, all the earth. And here's the part that we don't like. I will bring disaster on my people. It is the fruit of their own schemes because they refuse to listen to me. They have rejected my word. Now, that's what he was telling his people. His people were the Israelites. Well, when we come to know Jesus, we become his people. He loves all of us, and he wants this for all of us. He wants all of us to be his people. But if we don't want to be his people, God's a gentleman and he steps back and he allows us to live however we want. You know, this was happening in Israel, but it also happens today. You know, people, using that word again, hear the call, but they don't answer it. You know, it's really, I don't know how many times God called me before I actually said, okay, I will receive you as my Savior, Jesus, and I will try to live for you. Am I doing a good job at it? Oh, I still mess up plenty, trust me. We all mess up, none of us are perfect. But I know that I have Jesus as my Savior. So like I said, this was happening in Israel, but it's also happening today. And we want more for people. Why? obvious man we love y'all you know bad people reject god's word but also a lot of good people reject god's word now what do i mean by that you know there's a lot of good people listening today good in the parentheses uh or paren whatever you call that yeah <laughs> i've never learned those english words but you know some people are listening today that are good people. And, you know, I don't know how many people I talk to, they'll be like, well, I live a good life, and, you know, I try to live the best I can. And I, I, you know, one of these days when I go to heaven, I know when, you know, God brings out the scales and he looks at the good and the bad, you know, there's going to be more good than bad. And a lot of people, yes, there'll be more good than bad. And they're still not going to make it because they don't have Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Wow. That, that just bites, doesn't it? So, a lot of those good people that reject Jesus will still not make it. Because no matter how good they are in comparison to God, they're still not good. They still sin. They still make mistakes. And we still need that forgiveness but, you know, the awesome thing with God, God doesn't give up on people, and he won't give up on you. You can say no today, and he'll bug you again tomorrow, and he's going to ask you again the day after. Problem is, you don't know when that last time is that he's going to ask you. So, 
at some point, I mean, you got to answer the call. And if you hear the call, I suggest that you answer it today. Yeah. And the big thing with God, you know, good people, hey, we want to tell good people about Jesus. But the bad people, not so much. You know, I, hey, that's just like uh, uh, Jonah. You know, he didn't want to go to the Ninevites to tell them about Jesus because he was afraid they might repent. He didn't like them. They were bad people. But, hey, the bad people, Jesus don't reject them. He is there for them as much as he is for the good people, what we call the good people, which is really just better, not good. And like I said, in comparison, if you compare a good person to God, we're still down here. You compare a good person to a bad person, down here there's probably only a little bit of difference. There ain't much difference. So the big difference with God, he also wants the bad. Is what I put a note down there just to kind of drive it home. So because of the Israelites rejecting God, you know, the Israelites, God brought them out of Egypt and they came into the land, you know, they, in the, the land of Israel. He got the land, they got, he gave them this land that was theirs. He promised them this land. And because of the way they were living, he was planning to kick them out of the land. That he gave them. Now I'm going to read it in the scripture here because it's better than me. Jeremiah 7 3 it says this is what the Lord of heaven's armies the Lord of heaven's armies the God of Israel says check this out even now if you quit your evil ways I will let you stay in your own land but don't be fooled by those who promise you safety simply because the Lord's temple is there. They chant, the Lord's temple is there, the Lord's temple is there. But I will be merciful only if you stop your evil thoughts and deeds and start treating each other with justice. Only if you stop exploiting foreigners, orphans, widows. Only if you stop your murdering and only if you stop harming yourselves by worshiping idols. Then I will let you stay in this land and I will and that I gave your ancestors to keep forever. So he gave it to their ancestors forever, but it's like, it came. He didn't just want them to be there and live like, I'm always just like heathens, you might say. He wanted them to live for him. He wanted them to live for him. And even there, you know, with, with everything as bad as this was, you know, with them not following him and all that, he's still saying, you know, even now, if you quit your evil ways, I will let you stay in your own land. You know, the same thing applies today. No matter how bad a thing you've done, no matter what, where you're at, or how bad you feel, or you know, the things that you think you ought to not have done. I mean, there, there's a lot. Of, I got a few that I wish I wouldn't have done. But Jesus forgives me the same way he would for, will forgive you. And just the same way he told them, hey, I'm only let you stay in your land. If you turn from your evil ways, all the same way he's going to tell us, hey, if you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, repent. And just try to live for me and do the best you can. I know you're going to mess up, but I'm going to be there with you then. So he wants us to change our ways. Psalms 116.7, it says, Return to your rest, my soul, for the Lord has been good to you. For you, Lord, have delivered me from death and my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling, that I may walk before the Lord in the land of the living. Isn't that awesome? Because here's two other verses. Proverbs 131, it says, they will eat the fruit of their ways and be filled with the fruit of their schemes. And you're probably more familiar with here in the next one. As I have observed, those who plow evil and those who sow trouble reap it. In other words, you reap what you sow. That's just the way it works. And 
we don't like to reap what we sow, but it happens. That's just the way it is. You know, hey, if you jump off a bridge, you're probably going to hurt when you get landed. <laughs> you, you jump down, you break an ankle, and who knows what else you might do. You know, if you do stuff that you're not, a, shouldn't be doing, consequences happen. You reap what you sow. But did you also know if you reap, that if you do good, good things, you reap what you sow. Doing good things, and I've said this many times before, you know, good things isn't what gets you into heaven. Believing in Jesus as your savior is what gets you into heaven. But having Jesus as your savior will make you want to do good things and you reap what you sow. Have you ever noticed when you give somebody something, how it makes you feel good? That's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. You know, you help a homeless person or you help your friend get his bike going when you get home. You're like, ah, oh, it feels good, man. I was able to get his bike going for him. Or, you know, hey, I had an extra clutch cable. I was able to give him something. You know, it makes us feel good. Those are blessings from God you know, that he gives us. So what's the conclusion of all this? You know, why are we, why are we doing this? Well, we want the best for all of you. The ones that already have it need to share it with others. And the ones that don't have it, they need it. That's why we do this. That's why we want to. I mean, we have the desire for every one of you listening to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And that's why we do this. And if you already know him as your Savior, we have the desire for you to want to share that with people. Now, how do you do that? You know, like, oh, I'm not a preacher, man. I can't talk to people. I know. I couldn't either. And now I can. But even if you can't, you know the best way to share Jesus with people? Just give you a testimony. What has Jesus done for you worth talking about? And if you're saved and you're following him, I guarantee you there's things that he's done where you're like, yeah, I know Jesus did this. And you can share that with others. Or your testimony, how you came to know Christ. You know, there are so many testimonies of people that went from bad to good. And you share that with people and they're going to say, wow, that's pretty cool. So, you know, if you're good enough to share scripture, share scripture. But I've learned one thing that people don't respond too well to being beat up, being, being beat with, beat up with the Bible. You know, like when I go to the motocross track, I can't walk around all day with the Bible going, you're not saved, you're not saved. It doesn't work. What they want is they want testimony. They want to see that preacher Hines is living like he should and that having Jesus makes me have something that they may want. That's how you share Jesus. And that's how you can share Jesus. Make people realize you have something that they want. Now, it's really easy. If you wanted to share scripture, a real easy scripture to use would be uh, Matthew 22, verse 34 through 40. All right. It says, hearing that Jesus has silenced the Sadducees and the Pharisees got together, one of them, an expert in the law, tested him with this question with this question teacher which is the greatest commandment in the law jesus replied love the lord your god with all your heart with all your soul and with all your mind this is the furthest first and greatest commandment and that's easy right we understand why we ought to love god anybody that can make all this for us you know we ought to love him but then let's read on. It says, 
And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. Those two commandments, that's simple. If we do that, we got it covered. And if we don't think we can do that, well, see, when we receive Jesus, he's going to help us. And Matthew 11, verse 29 and 30, kind of tell us what happens. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. There we are again. You will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. A yoke, if you're not familiar with it, you know, is what they put across the horses when they get ready to tow a wagon or something like that or pull a plow. And, you know, they're side by side. And they're both pulling equally. Well, that's what Jesus is talking about. We're pulling together. He's not going to do it all. He wants you to yoke up with him and together we can succeed because he will be there helping and the thing we got to remember and you will find rest for your souls that's the important part that's why we're doing this we want y'all to find rest for your souls we want y'all if you don't have jesus to come to know jesus and with that i'd like to close let's pray our god and father we just thank you ever so much for being here this morning with us, Lord. We thank you ever so much for just teaching us your word and giving us the wisdom to know what is right and what is wrong. Lord, you minister to us as only you can. And Father God, you know, we thank you for your words this morning, Lord. And I just ask that anyone out there that needs to know Jesus as their Savior, that they would just say these simple words. Lord, I know I have not lived the way I'm supposed to, and I know I can't without Jesus as my Savior. Thank you so much for sending Jesus to die on the cross for me and to pay for the sins that I have committed. Lord Jesus, I receive you as my Savior. And I will live for you. And I know that the times I miss up, you will be there for me to help me through it. We just thank you. So, Father God, as we get ready to go out into the day this morning, you know, it's going to be another hot one, but it's a beautiful day. We thank you for your day. This is your day, so we want to do everything today for your glory and not ours. Father, we love you. We praise and worship you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank y'all for coming, and I hope you join us again next week at 9 a.m. Thanks.